Okay, so hello everybody. I think it's time to start because we don't have so much uh, time, but we have a lot of work today. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Irina and uh, I'm a teacher in the School of Gifted Children, Belim Innovation in Kostanay. And today I have prepared for you uh, just kind of uh, listening comprehension for pre-intermediate, intermediate students. And if you ask me what about the grade, well, it should be maybe the ninth grade, the 10th, the 11th one. So there is your uh, grown-up children, I can say like that. Well, and first of all, I would like to uh, present you uh, this platform, TED Talks, and uh, I should say that it can be really useful, uh, not only for teachers, but uh, and for English lovers. So if you're just a student, please check uh, this uh, website, uh, ted.com, and you can find a lot of uh, interesting speeches uh, devoted to technology, entertainment, design. Uh, it can be about health. It can be about every feature of life and everything. It is in English, and there are a lot of speakers. Well, and today uh, we are going to listen to one person whom I really appreciate and uh, you can find him here. Uh, his name is Mark Bezos and he is a volunteer firefighter. And today uh, we should find out some uh, points about him. Well, uh, you are going to watch a TED talk by Mark Bezos called A Life Lesson from a Volunteer Firefighter speaker and the talk, then work in pairs and answer the questions. Unfortunately, we can't work in pairs, but we can find out this information. And uh, after watching and listening to this video, you need to find the answers to the following questions. The first question is, what job did Mark Bezos have before uh, and uh, what job does he have now? The second one, how do people in the USA feel about firefighters and what motivates Mark Bezos? So maybe there is also interesting points about what we are going to speak. But first of all, uh, let's uh, read about him a little bit in order just you can take some hints about what can be this listening part. First of all, Mark Bezos, he is uh, a head manager of uh, the nonprofit organization called Robin Hood. There is a real person and he lives in the United States of America. And uh, when he is not fighting uh, with poverty, uh, he is fighting with fire. Uh, and today we are going to listen to uh, the live lesson of uh, this uh, volunteer firefighter and I hope you enjoy. Well, let's start. Uh, but as usual, before listening, we need to pay some attention to vocabulary. And now you can check yourself and I'll help you to do this. So let's take uh, the first uh, sentence uh, and uh, then we need to find definitions. But first of all, let's read in order to be ready and understand everything. So, uh, the first point is, firefighting is his vocation. He wanted to be a firefighter at age 12. So, you have to think, what can it mean? Okay, so what can it be vocation? Because usually we use this word in another rather meaning sometimes, okay? Uh, the next word is, he was jealous of his colleague's new office. Mm -hmm. Jealous. What can it mean? The next is she is the homeowner. Homeowner here is. It is her house and she lived uh, there for 20 years. The next interesting word that you can uh, find in this uh, speaking, you uh, can find soap kitchen. So poor people can get meals from a local soap kitchen. In my job as a firefighter, I am witness to a lot of accidents. Witness. So think about this word. What can it mean? Number six. When fire arrived, the kitchen was in flames. So in flames. Also, very important word here. My mother is a retired doctor, but she still works as a volunteer in an old people's hospital. Well, now we have seven keywords vocation jealous homeowner soap kitchen witness uh in flames and volunteer 
what can it mean? Okay, let's now find some definitions. Uh, there are also seven of them. Someone who does a job for no pay, on fire. C, a person who owns a fire or a flat. A job of career that you feel fits your aims in life. Feel negatively about someone who has something you want. Someone who sees an event. A place where free food is served to people indeed. So now we just need to find some definitions. Okay, and now let's uh, think about the first one. So you can check by yourself. So think for five seconds. Vocation, what can... There is a job or career that you feel fits aims in life. Mm -hmm. So number two, what can it be jealous? Number two, think a little, there is E. Uh, feel negatively about someone who has something you want. Three. Uh, homeowner. Yeah, it's a person who owns a house or a flat. C we have. Number four, soap kitchen. Number four, so check yourself. Number four, there is a G, a place where free food is served to people indeed. So it's usually for poor people who just don't have enough money uh, for living and uh, they need some help. So they can come up here and eat a little bit, okay? Uh, so number five. Uh, number five thing, and there is a witness. There is F, someone who sees an event. So five. There is F. Uh, point six, in flames. Mm -hmm. So think. Of course, there is easy. There is on fire. B. So the next point, uh, point is uh, volunteer. Everybody know this word because now we even don't translate this word. We can say volunteer in Russian. Yes. So and in English, there is volunteer. And there is seven A, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... Now, uh, you have some useful vocabulary like vocation, jealous, homeowner, soap kitchen, witness, in flames, and volunteer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go further. And uh, before listening, I want you to think about these ideas. Well, you should catch about what is this um, speech. It's mainly about what. We should always help our friends and family first. Small acts of kindness are as important as big ones. First, be successful in your job and then go out and help others. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is the main idea that you should catch. So read it again. So just. 10 seconds. You should catch it after the listening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, and now we are going to watch from uh, the very beginning uh, to the one minute in this. Uh, uh, TED Talks um, video, and you should catch these ideas because there is listening comprehension and you should be ready with this. No. Or he is a volunteer firefighter. Then you should catch at his first fire, he was the first or the second volunteer to arrive. No, number three, also you should catch when Mark Bezos find the captain he was speaking to another volunteer or the home owner now you know what the home owner is and number four it was the middle of the day or it was night and uh, it was raining okay and now let's see and watch mm -hmm. so try to catch these ideas Let it be like that. Back 
back in New York, I am the head of development for a nonprofit called Robin Hood. When I'm not fighting poverty, I'm fighting fires as the assistant captain of a volunteer fire company. Now, in our town, where the volunteers supplement a highly skilled career staff, you have to get to the fire scene pretty early to get in on any action. I remember my first fire. I was the second volunteer on the scene, so there was a pretty good chance I was going to get in. But still, it was a real foot race against the other volunteers to get to the captain in charge to find out what our assignments would be. When I found the captain, he was having a very engaging conversation with the homeowner, who was surely having one of the worst days of her life. Here it was, the middle of the night. She was standing outside in the pouring rain, under an umbrella, in her pajamas, barefoot, while her house was in flames. The other volunteer who had arrived just before me, let's call him Lex Luthor, <laughs> got to the captain first and was asked to go inside and save the homeowner's dog. The dog! Oh, I was stunned with jealousy. Here was some lawyer or money manager who for the rest of his life gets to tell people that he went into a burning building to save a living creature just because he beat me by five seconds. Well, I was next. The captain weighed me over. I said, Bezos, I need you to go into the house. I need you to go upstairs, past the fire, and I need you to get this woman a pair of shoes. <laughs> I swear. So, not exactly what I was hoping for, but off I went. Up the stairs, down the hall, past the real firefighters who were pretty much done putting out the fire at this point, into the master bedroom to get a pair of shoes. Now, I know what you're thinking, but I'm no hero. I mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so guys, now you can see uh, the first the first part uh, of his speech, and we can catch uh, these uh, ideas. Well, Mark Bezos is a professional volunteer firefighter. Yes, that is the right variant. Well, at his first fire, he was uh, there. So think a little bit. He was the second volunteer to arrive. Number three, when Mark Bezos found the captain, he was speaking to another volunteer firefighter or to homeowner. The right variant is the homeowner. Uh, number four, it was the middle of the night and she was standing under the pouring rain. So remember this word, volunteer firefighter. So the second volunteer, the homeowner, and it was night. Okay. Well, and now um, we are going to find this second part of this information and then all together, okay? So what should you catch? There you see the captain ask the other volunteer to rescue a, so whom, from inside the house. Try to catch, Mark Bezos felt how, so remember about vocabulary, that the other volunteer could tell people he saved the living animal. So number three, captain asked Mark Bezos to go into the house and to do what? Number four, he carried the shoes back downstairs and gave them to the, so for whom he gave it. Uh, a few weeks later, the homeowner sent a letter thanking the fire department in particular for saving her. It's also, it's kind of idea. Okay, so uh, let's uh, see uh, the rest of this video and then answer these questions. So let's start uh, from this point. Maybe Under an maybe umbrella, useful. in her pajamas, barefoot, while her house was in flames. The other volunteer who had arrived just before me, let's call him Lex Luthor, <laughs> got to the cabinet first and was asked to go inside and save the homeowner's dog. The 
a dog. Oh, I was stunned with jealousy. Here was some lawyer or money manager who for the rest of his life gets to tell people that he went into a burning building to save a living creature. Just because he beat me by five seconds. Well, I was next. The captain weighed me over. I said, Bezos, I need you to go into the house. I need you to go upstairs, past the fire, and I need you to get this woman a pair of shoes. <laughs> I swear. So, not exactly what I was hoping for, but off I went. Up the stairs, down the hall, past the real firefighters who were pretty much done putting out the fire at this point, into the master bedroom to get a pair of shoes. Now, I know what you're thinking, but I'm no hero. <laughs> I carried my payload back downstairs where I met my nemesis and the precious dog by the front door. <laughs> we took our treasures outside to the homeowner where, not surprisingly, his received much more attention than did mine. A few weeks later, the department received a letter from the homeowner thanking us for the valiant effort displayed in saving her home. The act of kindness she noted above all others Someone had even gotten her a pair of shoes. <laughs> you know, at both my vocation at Robin Hood and my avocation as a volunteer firefighter, I am witness to acts of generosity and kindness on a monumental scale. But I'm also witness to acts of grace and courage on an individual basis. And you know what I've learned? They all matter. So as I look around this room at people who either have achieved or are on their way to achieving remarkable levels of success, I would offer this reminder, don't wait. Don't wait until you make your first million to make a difference in somebody's life. If you have something to give, give it now. Serve food at a soup kitchen, clean up a neighborhood park, be a mentor. Not every day is going to offer us a chance to save somebody's life, but every day offers us an opportunity to affect one. So get in the game, save the shoes. Thank you. Well, uh, and remember that uh, you should catch what was the main idea of his speech. It's about what? It's about kindness. It's about being friendly or what? Okay. But now we have a really important task here for understanding. Uh, and uh, maybe you just uh, have already taken some notes uh, or have some ideas. So because we have, uh, don't have enough time, uh, we just let's check. I'll give you answers. Okay. So the captain asked the other volunteer to rescue a dog. Yes. So from inside the house. And why Mark was so jealous? Mark Bezos felt jealous that the other volunteer could tell people he saved a living animal. So he saved a living creature. So number three, uh, the captain asked Mark Bezos to go into the house and to carry or bring back some shoes. Shoes. So can you imagine the first volunteer saved the dog and Mark Bezos just please take the shoes, save the shoes. Okay, so number four, he carried the shoes and back downstairs and gave them to the homeowner. Mm -hmm. So take and give them to the homeowner. A few weeks later, the homeowner sent a letter thanking the fire department and particular for saving her shoes. So it, she said the great thank you to the uh, fire department just for one thing that somebody gave you even a pair of shoes. So that is the main funny idea uh, in this text, but uh, not the main crucial one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now you, there you can find uh, some uh, tape script. It's uh, what you have uh, already uh, uh, listened to 
And so let's just analyze a little bit. Uh, maybe you don't understand some idea, so I'll help you. And then we will conclude all of this. Well, uh, first of all, uh, Mark. A development uh, for a non-profit called Robin Hood. So he is kind of a volunteer also. And um, when he is not fighting with poverty, he is fighting with a fire. Uh, well, and uh, he was the second volunteer on the scene. So he was second. Now we remember this. Uh, and he, there was a pretty good chance. Mm -hmm. So I think you understand, but it was a real foot race. Now I have a question. What kind of foot race is it? So think a little bit. Why he said that is a foot race? He was the same. Yes, and so there is uh, another one volunteer who was the best in this case, and he was the first one. That is a foot race when you want to be the first one, okay? So the next point is assignment. So all of them uh, were given an assignment. Assignment, there is the same like task. So for Mark, it's save the shoes. For another volunteer who was the first one, that is what? So think that is to save the living creature the dog the homeowner's dog and um, when uh, they find the captain who was uh, in charge so captain in charge it means the captain who is responsible for this accident uh, he was having a very engaging conversation with a homeowner mm -hmm. And she was standing under the pouring rain. Okay, so please remember this point because after I'll check what you understand. She was standing under the pouring rain, under an umbrella, can you imagine, in her pajamas, barefoot, so it means without her shoes, uh, while her house was in flames. Uh, and... Mm -hmm. Uh, the first uh, volunteer who just um, was in that house, he saved the dog. Mark Bezos, so he saved a living creature, and Mark Bezos, he saved a pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you see this? At, at the very uh, end of this story, the homeowner did what? So you just can speak with yourself uh, and check yourself. Mm -hmm. So the homeowner noticed that the act of kindness she noted above all others, someone had even gotten her a pair of shoes. So in spite of that fact that it wasn't a living creature, in spite of that fact that it wasn't her dog, her precious dog, so precious dog you can find here. Mm -hmm. uh, she noted this like a, an act of kindness. And uh, what is his advice? So he said, don't wait, find here, until you make your first million to make a difference in somebody's life. You have something to give. Give it now. Serve food at a soap kitchen. Soap kitchen. Mm -hmm. So you know. Clean up a neighborhood park. Be a mentor. Not every day is going to offer us a chance to give somebody's life to save. But every day offers us an opportunity to affect one. So get in the game. Save the shoes. Mm -hmm. So there is the main ideas connected with this. And now let's check. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what has Mark Bezos learned about the acts of kindness and generosity that he sees? 
ask yourself about this. So what has Mark Bezos learned about the act of kindness? Mm -hmm. Number two, ask yourself, after reading even now, Mark Bezos' two word messages for his audience is don't what? Don't ask yourself. Mm -hmm. And number three, what is one example of kind of people we can give to others? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we can't interact. So just ask yourself, uh, speak with yourself, be your friend. <laughs> it's okay. Well, and now let's check. Well, the first question. He has learned that all the acts of kindness and generosity are important, whether they are big or small. The second, he said, don't wait. If people are waiting to help others once they have made money and live comfortably, they shouldn't because they have a lot to give already. So sometimes you can even just present a smile to your friend and that can be a great help for him. Number three, we can serve food at a soup kitchen. We can clean a neighborhood park. Okay, and uh, it was uh, at the very beginning of our lesson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to ask you, what is uh, the main idea of this text? The main idea of his speech? Ask it for you, for yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, and let me to conclude. Uh, it's it's an act of kindness first of all and don't wait yes so do something that you can do now how i have already said maybe just give a smile or maybe help your grandmother or your grandfather or just maybe call your mother sometimes okay so that is also the act of kindness that shouldn't be big one it can be just a small one but the other person can really appreciate this. Okay, guys, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and uh, once again, my name is Rina, and I'm a teacher of English in Belim Innovation School in Kostanai. And uh, I hope it was really useful for you. If you have children who, if you are a teacher you, and uh, you need uh, very interesting um, videos, you can find these videos on this website. It's ted.com. Com. And there are a lot of them with Russian tape scripts and English tape scripts also. Well, thank you so much. That is all for today. So if you have any questions, you can print them in the chart. So let's let's see maybe anybody has. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so Gulnara uh, here, uh, this webinar is for teachers and students for the ninth and 10th grade. Yes, it's in even older. Mm -hmm. So it's for people who are now pre-intermediate, intermediate students and so on and so forth. I think uh, you also have the same um, children. And uh, of course, if you're a teacher, and uh, I understand, I really, <laughs> I really can feel now that you say, well, that is not for my students. Well, but maybe what can you do? Uh, you can uh, just uh, take this video and uh, tape, take the script from the site. Yes, and maybe even read. And then they should retell using these interesting words. Just try. Okay, guys, so thank you. Thank you so much. That is all for today. Uh, and we can stop here. Okay, so you can leave the chart. So thank you so much.
You are welcome. You are welcome, guys. I'm so happy. <laughs> thank you. Gulnara, Natalia, thank you so much. Okay, guys. So, goodbye.